In a couple of previous videos, I discussed some time series models. For example, the AR or autoregressive model um, given down here, or the MA or moving average model given by this equation. And if you've watched those videos before, you can recall that, for example, the autoregressive model or the AR model is where the variable we're interested in, we're going to look at its relationship between itself and itself in the past. Okay, In this case, it's an AR1 model, so one lag period in the past. In the case of a moving average model, we have some average, which we call mu here, and it's going to be related to past error terms when we're forecasting the yt. So in time series models, we're looking at the relationship between our variable of interest over time rather than the relationship between a dependent variable and some other independent variables. Now, I didn't discuss it before, but certain conditions need to be met for these models to work. That is, the data needs to be stationary. So what do we mean by that? Okay. Sometimes they call it covariance, covariance stationary, or um, just stationary or stationarity. In order to conduct valid statistical inference, the time series needs to be stationary. What does that mean? It means the expected value must be constant and finite for all periods. Okay, so that is the expected value yt, and we'll call that mean or that average mu its absolute value has to be less than infinity. In the case of the variance, the time series has to um, exhibit constant variance and it must be finite for all periods. And the covariance of the time series with itself for a fixed number of periods in the past or the future must be constant and finite for all periods. So that is the covariance between yt and yt minus s, where s is some lag, um, has to be equal to, uh, we can call it gamma, and this gamma has to be, the absolute value has to be less than infinity. If it's not the case, then the estimation results will have no economic meaning. So how do we identify this? Well, one way is to look at graphs. So if we graph the time series, if you look at series one right here, what do you notice? You notice it seems to have a constant mean. It's fluctuating around that same point, but it seems to have a non-constant variance. It's quite clear, right? Big variance in the beginning of the data, and then it's much smaller later on. So that doesn't meet the stationarity condition. How about series two? Series two seems to have constant variance, right? The fluctuations seem to be constant over time, but it seems to be trending upward, which indicates that you're not gonna have a constant mean. And in fact, if you took the mean for different points in time, okay, a local mean, you would find the mean was much lower here, let's say, than it is up here. So that violates the condition. And then in the case of series three, seems to have a constant mean, seems to have a constant variance, but it seems to exhibit some, uh, some, some seasonality, okay? Seems to have this pattern where it goes up and then it goes down and it goes up and it goes down. And that may also be the case of, for series two as well, right? We find that in a lot of data, all right? Um, for example, ice cream sales are probably going to be somewhat seasonal. You sell a lot in the summer, you don't sell as much in the winter. Right? Toy sales, you may sell a lot more around Christmas time than you do around other times of the year. So there's a seasonality pattern there, so it doesn't meet the stationarity condition. So suppose you have data that's not stationary. Is there anything you can do, or do you just have to say, throw your hands up and say, well, there's nothing we can do? Well, suppose we look at series two. 
which could be represented by some sort of trend model. So a trend model is the case where, you know, our variable of interest, we're simply going to be estimating something. We get a constant plus some coefficient times time, right? So it's trending up over time. And let's call that, and then there's going to be an error term, and let's call that equation one. Well, we could do transform the data by differencing it and perhaps get rid of the seasonality, or I'm sorry, the trend here, and make it stationary. So if we defined a new variable, zt, which equals yt minus yt minus 1, we'll call that equation 2. So if we do that, it turns out that substituting 1 into 2, we get this equation here. All right? This is the equation this is um, yt, and we're going to subtract out yt minus 1. And if you do some manipulating, you get this value here for zt. Well, what's the expected value of zt? Okay, um, It's going to be equal to b1, because b1 is a constant, and the expected value of these is going to be equal to zero. Expect, we make an assumption that the expected value of the error terms is zero, so you can do the expectation you know, with uh, addition or subtraction separately, so you expect this to be zero, so we meet this condition. How about the variance? Well, if we assume that the variance of epsilon t, we'll define it as s squared or s you know raised to the second power then the variance of zt turns out to be 2s2 okay you can do some manipulations in the algebra and stuff but you know that's sort of beyond the scope of what most people want to see it turns out that it's constant and if it's the case that um, our series had no seasonality then differencing isn't going to add any seasonality, so that condition is met. So now you have a stationary time series, and if it's stationary, you can now apply these models, such as the AR or the MA model, or a combination of both, which is an AR-MA model. So if you can't meet the conditions, oftentimes there are transformations you can do to make the data stationary, so then you can apply um, these uh, time series models in order to do forecasting and analysis.